I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when the Spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. So, I done said I'm going to say yes. So, when situations come up, when people start acting crazy, when people start screaming and yelling at me over the phone or even in person, when a spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. So, that's what happened. I start aching people, and people be like, what is going on with that shortage? And it's because when the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. So, hey, you may not like my answer, but the answer ain't for you. If the Lord tell me to do something, I'm going to do what the Lord say do. And, and, and if it's something that's for you, he bringing me out some foolishness with you. He telling me not to pay no attention to you. With my whole heart, I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. So that's that's what it's going to be. So now I'm at the point. I'm at the point. I ain't going to talk no more about my sister because that's a, neg- that's a negative vibe. And just like I said, I had the dream, and in the dream, I called her. So I'm just assuming that the Lord want me to call her. So I will call her. I am just got to wait and see when the Lord want me. When he say call, I'm going to call. Because I don't want to be fussing and arguing with her. And see, in the dream, when I call her, it is going to pick up from that situation. It's going to pick up from what she said. It's not going to be like, oh, we'll talk about that. Another. No, it's going to pick up from that. Because see, then we can't move on. She can't move on. Because see, it ain't bothering me. Because I know what I didn't do. You see what I'm saying? I know what I didn't do. Maybe she felt some kind of way because I didn't come down there after she got robbed. And then they probably said that's why she didn't come. Because she had something to do with it. And she couldn't tell. Please. Please. Get get this foolishness out of here. See, and people don't understand. I don't have no time. My grandmother used to say that. Now let's see what she's saying. She said, I ain't got no time for no foolishness. And that's how I feel. I ain't got no time for nobody foolishness. You see what I'm saying? Because foolishness, what's in the word? Fool. And you ain't going to make no fool out of me. So y'all want to go on with your foolishness? Y'all get ahead. Because in the long run, y'all going to turn out looking like a jokester. And that ain't happening to me. Okay? Y'all want to go along. Y'all want to go on acting like that. Y'all want to go on... Uh, doing whatever y'all doing, saying whatever y'all saying. Y'all go ahead. I can't tell nobody how to act. I can't tell nobody what to do. I am only responsible for my actions. I'm only accountable for what I do, what I think, what I say, where I go. So wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you say, you are accountable. So that's why I live the life, say what I'm supposed to say, mind my business, do what I'm supposed to do, because I don't want to be a stumbling block to nobody. I don't want nobody to go to hell because of something that I did or said. They have all this foolishness in them, holding on to all this foolishness. Come on, let it go. Let it go. We had a nice service Sunday. We had a nice message. Everybody sang, the children sang, the voices of praise sang, everybody sang. Ella Robinson sang. Who else got up there to sing? Somebody else they called to sing. 
Oh, uh, uh, Elder Young saying, we had all these beautiful songs going through. With the service over, all I wanted was a drop of soda. The elder going to tell, no, no, no. We're at it too. No, I want you to understand. It didn't have nothing to do with the soda. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't the, it wasn't, the issue wasn't the fact that she said no to the soda. The issue of the fact is that what came, the, 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 the spirit that came out from what you were saying in reference to the soda. You see what I'm saying? You felt some kind of way for some foolishness that went down with your daughter and somebody else, or maybe your daughter and me, I don't know. And so you feel like you will come to the rescue of her and you want to fight me? Go ahead. Take your soda. Get home and start drinking the soda and wind up choking. And the Lord has said, mm, that's for not giving Vanish Jordan no soda. I mean, hey. That's just a thought. I'm not saying it's about to happen because I don't want nobody to choke. But um, you see what I'm saying? But my whole point is that, not about the soda, it's the fact that we had such a good service. And see, let me tell you something. When people start acting a fool, the Holy Ghost let me know why they're acting a fool. I ain't in no, I ain't in no, let me see. I ain't in no surprise state of mind when people start acting crazy because the Holy Ghost let me know. He say, lead your own truth. That's a part of being led in the truth. You're supposed to have insight on people. The Holy Ghost gives you insight. He gives you knowledge and understanding, not only of his word, but of who he is. Not only of who he is, but who people are. That's why I say the church fell because there's no vision. Is that right? If I'm wrong, then y'all y'all can correct me. Because... If you ain't got no vision for your church, then how you going to lead a church? And I ain't talking about the individual. I'm talking about the leadership, just like the president. You see what I'm saying? He got to have some knowledge of presidential, or however, whatever that, however you say that word, in order to become a president. Something had to transpire in his running for office to, besides the votes because you ain't gonna get no vote if nobody don't feel you can do nothing you see what i'm saying and some people get in office because they be like you know what i just want to see what they're gonna do some people get in office because they be like i'm not voting for that one i'm gonna vote for this one and don't know nothing see i'm not a politician so mm, whoever the lord want office that's who's gonna be in office i let him be in and in, 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 you know he said obey the laws of the land voting is a choice but going through a red light is disobedient. So that's a difference, okay? That's a difference. So you got to be able to, to distinguish what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to do, what you should do, and what you shouldn't do, okay? So therefore, as the words say, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become of new. So when you get connected to Christ and become a part of Christ, then everything begins, becomes new to you. And then the Holy Ghost has, begins to lead you. It begins to guide you, tell you what it is that you need to do, tell you what, what you need not to do, what you need to say, what you need not to say, when to sit down and be quiet, when to get up and open your mouth. So, I'm telling you something, I, I, I'm just downright, for the Lord, downright for the Lord. My whole entire being is just for the Lord. You see what I'm saying? To to show out for the Lord. You know how people say, oh, they just showing off. Yes, I'm a show off for the Lord. When I lead service, I'm a show off for the Lord. When I testify, I'm a show off for the Lord. When I dress, I'm a show off for the Lord. Not for nobody else. You don't have to like what I got on. You don't have to like my hair. You don't like the length of my hair? Too bad. You ain't wearing it. The Lord ain't telling me, ooh, don't put on all that hair. All that. No. You don't want to wear it? Then you go sit down somewhere and wear the length that you want to wear. You don't like my glasses? So what? 
You will never spend all the money for some Gucci. That's your business. The Lord blessed me to do it. I do it. So you want to totally spend it all your money on these materialistic things. Excuse you. So you don't spend no money. You don't spend no money. So why you coming in there all flashy looking? Oh, you wanna? You ain't got no business wearing no jewelry and all this stuff. Why you got all that jewelry on your clothes, on your hat? Can barely see your face because all the flashing, the bling bling. So if you going to wear it on your hat, why you can't wear it on your fingers? Get out of here with that foolishness. Why you can't wear it in your mouth? No, a lot of people don't like the fact that I got a gold in my mouth. So what? That's right. Because my aunt Bishop Mingo had gold up in her mouth. And I admire that lady so much. I didn't have her weight. I didn't have the ability to preach like her. I didn't have the knowledge that she I'm praying on that wisdom that she got. I'm asking God to give me wisdom. More and more wisdom. Because I got wisdom. But I want more. That, that, you said if anybody, the Bible said if anybody want wisdom, ask of the Lord. So I'm doing what the word said. I want some wisdom. I want to be smart. In him, I don't want to be smart in how to build a house or how to how to take care of business. I want to be smart in the Lord. I want to be able to to um, emphasize things. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to see things and be able to tell you this is how it should be and this and this and this is how I want. Point blank, I want wisdom. You see what I'm saying? So I couldn't. I I didn't. I didn't have. All those qualifications that she had. You see what I'm saying? But one thing I could get that she had, and that was a gold tooth. And I ain't looking at it all, oh, so I'm putting a gold tooth. Because, see, back in the, the, the 80s, you know, gold represent like gangster and stuff like that. When you put it in your mouth, that's why the grills and all that stuff. I wore it in my mouth because I like how it made me look. It distinguished my looks, you see what I'm saying? Because I had such big teeth. So I said, well, let me put the gold in my mouth. So therefore, people won't pay attention to how big my teeth is. They'll just see the gold, bling, bling, bling. So, you know, people didn't want to say nothing. I don't care. People didn't want to, one person actually say, you don't need no gold in your mouth. Why are you putting gold in your mouth? God ain't putting no gold in So what? Because you don't want it in your mouth, back off, go sit down somewhere. So what? People always open up their mouth, got to say something, trying to hurt people, feeling trying to, because you don't want to do it. Somebody got a black car, they want to drive a Benz because you can't afford it or because you can't drive it. Why are you going out there buying a black Benz? Buying, and then they're going to emphasize the black so you know you, you, they talking about chip. Why you going to go out there and buy a black Benz? Why you can't go get a white one? Why you can't go get a Buick? Because they don't want a Buick. You drive your little Buick and go about your business. You drive your little punch car. What was the punch car? Your Volkswagen. Go on. You drive your little Volkswagen and get on in there. And we punch each other's arm. Took my punch car. But somebody want to buy a Benz or want to buy a Lexus. I told somebody I wanted to buy a Lexus. They was like, oh, my God. You know, that's $50,000. Did I ask you how much it costs? I didn't ask you that. I told you I want to buy one. So if I'm telling you I want to buy one, it must be mean I got the money to buy it. So you know what? They didn't even take me to a dealer. They didn't even take me. And it wasn't because I ain't had no license because I had my license. I was already driving. But no. Then I had somebody else that I wanted them to come with me so I could buy a car. And I was getting a, um, that, what was the name of that car? A Sabaru, it was a, sta a station wagon, it was a station wagon, but I think it was a Sabaru, if I'm saying the name, I don't know names of cars, but it was a nice car, it was a family car, my kids was little at the time, so I needed a family car, that person took the card, kept the card, and want to make it seem like I ain't give them no card, I told the person, I said, yeah, all right, all right, all right. And then I find out later on that they was running their mouth to somebody that told them what to do. And they did it. People want to go. They needed to invest in their money. Well, shut up. Did you come to me and tell me to invest? Y'all sat there waiting until I spend up the money. And then y'all want to open up your mouths and say something. When I was going around buying stuff, spending all this money, I gave my tithes. 
I gave my tithes. Whatever amount of, I think, whatever amount of money that I got, I calculated and I put my tithes in. That's how they knew how much money. And that was the reason why I didn't want to pay no tithes. Because you sitting up there. Oh, this is what they get. Oh, they gave seven seventy dollars. Oh, they must be getting seven hundred dollars. Oh, oh, they gave sixty dollars. Oh, they gave a thousand dollars. Oh my goodness. So now you want to get up there and you want to start preaching on what people are supposed to be doing with their money. Cause now you know how much I'm gonna be honest with you. That's why I did not pay no tithe. And God knew it ain't had nothing to do with him. God knew I was thankful for what he did how he provided stuff for me, and I wanted to give back to him. But I was stuck on that thing that if I give them 70, then they know how much I got, and then every time I come in there with something, they, they, they know. They know what I'm buying. They see me come in there with something new. Every Sunday I will come with something new. Oh, yes, I did. I ain't going to lie. I had a new bag, a new shoe, a new coat, a new dress. My kids had new stuff, new hairstyles, whatever. I come, then you want to talk. Spending all this money. Y'all better say, put your money. Shut up. Shut up. You saving your money for somebody else to spend. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep up with the foolishness. Y'all up there putting your money to the side. Nah, 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 nah. And what's going to happen? God forbid you leave this earth. And don't be surprised that the people that you didn't want to spend the money is the one that's going to spend it up. They the one that's going to get it. And you ain't going to want them to have it, but you ain't going to be able to do nothing. You ain't going to have no other choice but to give it to them. Whoever it is. Come on now. Money is money. You see what I'm saying? Money is money. Money is money. Come on. Money is made to spend. Yes, you save it. You save it for me personally. I have a savings account. I save it for emergency. And in my life, there's always emergency. And I don't mean a health emergency. In my life, there's always a financial emergency. That's why I put money to the side. That's why I hold on to money. I keep money. So when that emergency arrives, I'm able to go for it. Because that's what that, that that's how my, my agenda, my life agenda is. Now, somebody else that don't work and retire, they put their money aside for whatever they put it aside for. Because they ain't doing nothing with it. The only time you see them with new clothes... Is when it's somebody else's day. <laughs> when somebody else having a birthday appreciation service, then they go buy some new clothes. It ain't your day. What are you being all fly for? It ain't your day. You taking all the shine from the person that the, that the, that, that the service belonged to. Okay. When it's your day, you go get something that you wondering where the crazy they got that from. You look more better on somebody else's day than on your own day. So, instead of taking that money, you know, mm, that, that's why I ain't got no money. That's why, I'm going to be honest with you. That's why I feel the Lord don't let me have no money. I'm not, I'm not into that category of retirement. I ain't into that category of a whole lot of money and stuff like that. Because I'll be giving it away. I'll be like, come on, we're going on a trip, you guys. And I'm taking everybody named Mama with me on my trip. My trip. Oh, well, I don't have enough to get them. But don't worry, I got you covered. Oh, um, we need to drive there. But um, we ain't got no car. Don't worry, I get a car. I get a car. I go spend thousands of dollars on the car, let you drive the car, and you get there, and I'm looking for the car, and you, you done got the car, and you going about your business, and I'm the one that need the car. That's why I ain't got no money. Because when I did have money, I went and helped everybody in their mother for fixing up people's houses. Giving people money. Buying stuff for their kids. Not talking about the kids. Talking about them. Buying stuff for their kids. And they turn around and flat finger face me in the face. But it was okay. I felt good because I was able to help somebody. That's my thing. See, because my gift is help. So when I help somebody, it makes me feel good. I don't care if I, if I, if I see you walking down the street and you need a piece of tissue or you need a piece of gum and I got it in my bag and I give it to you, I feel good about it. Now, if you take the gum and throw it away, it don't make me no difference. But see, half the time when I help a person, it's a person that needed help. The Lord don't allow me to, hurt no, to, to, to help nobody that doesn't need help. Because see, there's people out there that take advantage of you. He don't even have me on that, that boat no more. He ain't got me on that train no more. 
Everybody that I help is who God put in my path to help. And when I help them, they be glad about it. I preach the word in my church every, not every fifth Sunday. Once a year on the fifth Sunday, let me put it that way. Once a year on the fifth Sunday. And every time, so far, every time when I finish preaching, somebody comes to me and say, I really enjoyed that word. That word was for me. I really needed that. And, and that's all that matters to me. I tell the person, well, that's all that matters. Because he said his word will not come back void. It's going to go out where it's intended to go and who it's for. It's going to get them. It's going to do whatever needs to be done. And it's up to them to, to accept it, whatever the case may be. So I guess I don't talk to them. That's all I need to say. And I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me when to call my sister. Because I ain't calling to argue with her, but I'm calling to say some things to her. And to witness her and tell her, you know, you need to stop playing with the Lord. You got the voice. You mind me of Tangent. Tangent had the voice. They just got it naturally. They could just take anything and you could just hear that harmony, that melody in their voice, deep down in their voice. They, they, they gift it. You see, it's a gift not, that's not of a repentance. You see what I'm saying? So, it's witness to her. So you need to get yourself in the church. Now, you know what? It ain't even all about coming to church no more. Because people quick to say, well, I go to church. I got a church over here. I got it. No. You need to give your life to the Lord. And if anybody here in this, this watch, will watch this video, you need to give your life to the Lord. You need to get on your knees. You need to tarry. Find a church that tarries because you ain't, you ain't got too many of that. What is tarrying? Getting, your, getting on your knees, putting your hands up, and calling only Jesus. Not only Jesus, only Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just calling him until he changed you from the inside. You calling his name changes him. Not saying thank you, Jesus. Not saying only Jesus. Not saying nothing. Just stand, sitting there waiting. No. He, he said, everyone that calleth on the name of Jesus shall be saved. So people talk about where, where's tearing at? There it is. You got to call on the name of Jesus in order to be saved. Yes, you confess your sins and, you know, what is it? If you believe Jesus Christ and reason, raised Jesus from the dead, whatever. I don't even know that verse, but I'm sure y'all know it. You shall be saved. Yes. That is a step to salvation. But you still got to get salvation. You see what I'm saying? And salvation is being saved. And you got to call on Jesus. You call Jesus until you feel a change coming over you. Not nobody telling you, oh, all right, you can stop that. All right, you say that. No, you better call him until you feel a difference. Until you find yourself not wanting to do those, those sinful things. Not people telling you, no, you can't do it. And I ain't talking about smoking and drinking and clubbing. And I'm talking about malice, hatred, uh, 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 concupiscence, filthy communication in your mouth. You see what I'm saying? All these sins that you have inside. These are things that's inside of you. Smoking is something that you pick up. It's a cigarette. So it's something you see. Drinking is something you go to the liquor store and you pour it in the, in the glass or you drink it out the bottle. These are physical things. Those things that when you call Jesus and he got to clean out, those are things that you got from Adam. Those are things that was introduced to you through your ancestors. Generational curses, whatever you want to call it. To me, it's sin. And in order for sin to be clean, Christ got to do it. And in order for it to be done, you got to call on him. You got to you gotta, um, call his name. You got to believe on him. Read Acts 1, the day of Pentecost. That, that's what has to be done. A Pentecostal day got to take place in your life, in your soul, in your heart. And in your mind. And unless you do it that way, you ain't saved. You ain't saved. I'm going to tell you straight forward. You ain't saved. 
You ain't getting no Holy Ghost. You ain't safe. You ain't, the Holy Ghost ain't coming to you and took your tongue and you started speaking in other language as the Spirit of God gave utterance like in Acts 1. Then you need to go and do your first work over. It's time for people to know the truth now. These churches is, is, um, is um, sugarcoating it. John the Baptist, it's time for you. I miss John the Baptist. Y'all want to know who I am? I miss John, miss John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Miss John the Baptist. Miss Baptist for the Lord Jesus Christ. Paving the way for you so that you can get to him. And so that once you get to him, you can get to heaven. Or you can get to where he is. You got to tell everything. You got to receive the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the only thing. The only thing tangible thing see because this is something that you're gonna feel it you're gonna feel it you can't too much touch it but you can feel it and you will feel that difference in you and you will have the mind when the holy ghost begin to take over your mind and change your mind you will have the mind only to do right don't don't let people fool you and say oh you can't do that we ain't perfect let me tell you something you can be perfect Somebody say, oh, so you don't never do wrong? No, I'm, I'm not talking about me. I'm just saying as in general, oh, you perfect. People talk about being perfect. So then if they perfect, then they never do wrong. That's impossible. Oh, no, it's not. You say, be perfect as I am perfect. Be holy as I am holy. And if Jesus was perfect, who is to say that you can't be perfect? You can't. Be, I think it's in the Bible. It just came to be perfect in all thy ways. Right? So if it's in the word, and the word is saying that you could be perfect, then it can be done. It can be done. All right, I just need to. All right, so I think that's it. I need to go eat my breakfast. I've been talking. I ain't get a chance to drink my coffee. But I want to see if I if I'm right in that scripture. I always check my my scriptures to see if I'm right. I'm waiting for my iPad to come on because apparently it was dead as a doorknob. Yes, I'm telling y'all, this it ain't it ain't nothing. I'm telling you, your soul is nothing to play with, because it says, "Fear not he that can kill the body, but fear ye him that can kill the body, and the soul." All right, let me. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, it's not in Alright. Oh, what, what did I say? Um, uh, person. Let me see if that's in uh, D.
Okay, so the New King James Version. Let me get my Bible. Hang on, I gotta get my Bible. Since I got it, I need to do some studying. I gotta go to class tonight. <laughs> All right, so let me go to Ezekiel first. Ezekiel 28. Four, six, seven. Ezekiel 28 and 15. Thou was thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. Mm, that's something to think about. By the multitude 15 to 17. By the multitude of thy merchandise. They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings. And they may behold thee. Wow, who is he talking about? Tyrus, pride, and moon. So Tyrus is what? So this this must be a prophet. Oh no no no! This is somebody else. This is somebody talking to Tyrus. He said, "The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up." And thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Wow. This person, this prince. Oh, this is Ezekiel. So it's the prophet Ezekiel. God was sending him to Tyrus because Tyrus had so much pride. Whoa. So he was saying that thou was perfect. And his ways from the day that he was created. And then he got corrupted till iniquity was found in thee. Okay, so in Matthew. Let me see. That was Ezekiel. What was I looking for? I was looking for what I had said that thou was per thou was perfect in all thy ways. So in Matthew 5 and 48 says, 5 and 48 says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So why people be saying they nobody perfect? They lying. Listen to that. Ye have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. You see what I'm saying? I mean, don't fight. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Let me read that again. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other. Turn to him the other also. Okay, so now the footnotes that Jesus is not speaking against the administration of proper justice toward those who do evil, right? So if you did wrong and you getting reprimanded for it, that's different. And that, you'll find that in Romans 13, 1 through 4. The verses that follow, verses 43 and 48, indicate... 
that he is referring to loving, loving one's enemy. So let's go down. Let's read on. So I stopped at 39. Let's go to 40. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that ax, give to him that asked thee, and from him that will borrow of thee, turn not away. Come on, what? This is the, what the word said. If somebody comes to you say, "Can I borrow something?" People don't want to give nothing to nobody. They be like, "No, I ain't gonna give it to them," because what they gonna do with it? They could go out there and make their own money. Well, you see, you can, you can follow some of the Bible and not all of the Bible. Let's read that again. All right. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that will borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Let's go on. Ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Wow. I'm saying. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Now, see, people always say, well, you need to pray for them. Now we're going to read when we're supposed to pray. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. So blessing, you either say bless you or you say, and you know what? I do say that when people say things to me, I'll be like, well, bless you, right? Mm, mm. So I actually be using, I'll be actually doing what the word say. And then he realize it. And um, when, when it say, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. So these are people that, that, that you know hate you. And there's people that hate you right in the church. They just ain't using the word. They just not saying, oh, I hate you. But they actions of hate, of hate is towards you. But he is telling you to do good to them. Do good to them. So even though... This elder did not want to give me a soda, but let's say, for instance, I would have got a soda and I would have been drinking and she would have came to me and said, well, can I have some soda? I would have gave her some. I would have gave her some because I ain't going to do to you what you do to me because I'm accountable for what I do, not accountable for what you do. Okay. And then he's down and this is, this is who we pray for. And people always say, well, if they do wrong to you, if they say this, they curse you, all that, you pray for them. That's not what the word says. The word says, love your enemies. So those you know, that's your enemy. You love them. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And personally, see, those are the ones you got to pray for. Those ones that you know is scheming against you. That's doing things against you in the back. They just as quiet. They ain't saying nothing, but they putting other people to do devilment to you. Those are the ones you pray for. You know why? Because, see, this is something that's that's just in them. See, people curse you. They say it out their mouth, whatever. People, and what's the other one? You you got your neighbor over there. You love your neighbor. You see what I'm saying? Uh, what else is there? Love your enemies. That's what it is. Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. You bless them, you know? You good do you do good to them that hate you. You know, you know they hate you. But somebody that despitefully use you and persecute you. This is somebody mm, let me give it let me let me tell you persecute. Persecute is when somebody brings you your name. Could be scandalizing your name, one. Or calls your name out in front of everybody. You may not even be there. But call your name out in front of everybody so that everybody will know what you did, either to them or did in general. Now, it could not be wrong, but because they feel some way about you, they're going to bring out your name and say, well, Evans Jordan, uh, uh, somebody came. Maybe they won't say your name, but they say you, you, how can I say this? How can I say it? You probably went to them and say, oh, look, uh, um, I'm sorry. I bought my shoes and I left them at church. And uh, I'm trying to think. Tag, I'm trying to think because, yeah, yeah, you know, persecuting is, is 
but let, let me just go on with my thought. And they they call out your name and let everybody know what you did, even though you're not there, because they ain't going to do it with you there. They ain't going to call your name out when you're there. Say your name, say what you did, and everybody's like, wow, she did this. But we're going to do this. We're going to sit her down. We're, we're not going to have her preach no more. We're not going to have her um, testify no more. I want nobody to affiliate with Evangelist Jordan because she did this thing right here. So now you, not only is that person that it was done to that they feel bad about, that they feel angry because I did it to them, but now the whole church is against me now. That's a form of persecution. And you brought... When you brought to the front like they did with the, adult, the adulterous lady. They was trying to get her persecuted by stoning her. But they wanted to see what Jesus was going to say. Because he's supposed to be connected with Moses. He's supposed to be believing and he's supposed to be the big God. So now you, what you, this is what Moses said. But he told him straightforward, hey, you know what? Well, which was brought out at the, at the, at the message Sunday. But um, those are the people we pray for. And then if you there and you did something or they heard that you did something, they ain't going to mention your name, but they're going to put you in the category of people or saints or evangelists. You see what I'm saying? They're doing these things and they can't preach to me. They can't say nothing to me. They can't talk to me. They can't. How you say, how you got some hope? They're, they're persecuting you in front of everybody because, see, everybody know what happened. Because they don't talk about it. So now that you there, they want, they want to rise up above you and show the people that they done ran their mouth to that they the big God, they the big man, they the big woman. And they're going to they gonna reprimand you in front of everybody. But that's a form of persecution. Now I don't think about it. It's a form of persecution. Mm -hmm. So he said, pray for them which despitefully uses you and persecute you. Okay, so let's go back to the note. That ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren... Only, what do, ye, what do ye more than others? Do not even the Republicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So they can stop that foolishness. So let me go. Okay, so verses 43 and 48 indicates that he is referring to loving one's enemies. Verses 44, Luke 6 and 27. When, when wrong, we are not to react in a spirit of hatred, but in a way that shows that we have values that are centered in Christ and his kingdom. Our actions toward those who are unkind to us should be such that it might lead them to accept Christ as their savior. As examples of spirit. So when when we find out that we're wrong, we don't get an attitude. We don't lash out. We don't tell. We don't say, well, I'm this person. I'm that person. You can't tell me who is you to reprimand me. No, no, no. He said when wrong, we are not to react in a spirit of hatred. See, now you're feeling some kind of way towards the person that told you. And don't let it be a lay member. You see what I'm saying? I ain't got to listen to you. Who is you? Okay, so I got a title. You want to listen to me? I ain't got to listen to you. Who is you? So now I'm a pastor. I ain't got to listen to you. Who's you? Now I'm a bishop. I ain't got to listen to you. So who you listening to? Because you ain't listening to God. Because God is right through the protocol. But because of... Because of who it is that's that, that's that missionary, that sister, who it is that's that missionary, who it is that's that evangelist, who it is that's that pastor and that elder and that bishop. You don't want to listen to them because it's who they are. 
But if it's God in them, you're supposed to listen to them. So our, when wrong, we are not to react in the spirit of hatred. But in a way that shows we have values that are centered in Christ and his kingdom. So when you're wrong, you must think, okay, how can I perfect this so that I can continue to build the kingdom? How can I show to people that, yes, I am wrong? See, people don't, people don't like to give in to wrong because they, they feel that it makes them less of who they are. But they don't even understand that makes them more powerful in God. Your character grows when you're able to humble yourself underneath your wrongdoing. We ain't even talk about, oh, even if I'm right, I accept the fact that I'm, I'm, I was wrong. Even if I know I'm right and I, and I know that the Lord told me to say this and do this and per, people tell me I'm wrong, I accept it. No, no, no. We talking about wrongness. Because, see, that's still an ego right there. I know I'm right, but all right, I accept it. I accept. No, no, no. We ain't talking about your ego right now. If you actually was wrong and somebody came to you and told you that's wrong. That's not what the Lord said. That's not what the Lord wants done. He said this. And you know that you're wrong. But because of who it was that told you. And sometimes, you know what? It ain't even about who told it. It's all about their ego and their pride. It's all about them. Because they can care less who tell them. Because they don't. You see, when you got an ego and you got pride, you don't have respect for nobody. You, oh, I, I have respect for this person. Have, and that's a revelation that just was given to me. So therefore, I'll be saying, I, use, I, I won't say that no more because I used to say, oh, they accept it from that person because of who that person is. But they're not going to accept it from me for who I am. No, no, no. It's them. They the one that got the ego problem. They the one who got the pride problem. So even if it's, if it's a person that they admire and like, as long as that person is not, button against them they will accept it so it don't have nothing to do with who i am you see what i'm saying it's just the fact that i'm gonna butt against wrong i'm gonna stand up for christ if you're not standing up for christ i'm gonna let you know you're not standing up for christ no that's not right no that's not in the word did the lord tell you that so you're gonna have a problem with me because i'm standing up for christ and now i'm fighting against your ego and your pride so you're going to always have a problem with me. And so it's going to look like she always got problems with Evangelist Jordan, but she ain't got no problems with Sister Mac. Because Sister Mac probably ain't standing. Now, I ain't saying Sister Mac ain't safe, but maybe Sister Mac ain't to Evangelist Jordan's level. Ain't get there in Christ yet. So this person is able to pat down Sister Mac. Well, you know, you ain't got to do it that way. You know, but, but you know, it should be done. Now, Sister Mac is telling the person. But well, you really should do it this way. This is the way that the Lord said to do it. No, no. I mean, I'm not saying that the Lord didn't tell you this. But you know what? I'm going to pray on and wait on it. And then know they ain't praying on nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because they pride and their ego is telling them, no, no, no. We're going to do it this way. Well, we're going to try it this way. All right, that's good. But we're going to try it this way. And they may not even say we're going to try this. They might just say, oh, all right, all right. And when you look around, they doing it the way that they wanted to do it. That you done told them that that's not the way they should do it. But they know that Sister Mac ain't going to say nothing. Sister Mac going to be satisfied. But Evangelist Jordan is going to be like, what? Did... So you really going against God. Because see, when God tells you something, you got to be confident that it's God. And you got to stand in it and know that it's God. See, so Sister Mac know God told her something. But because it's the person, who the person is, well, then I must be wrong. Well, maybe it wasn't the Lord. You start second guessing. The Lord ain't, ain't confused. He know what he's saying. He know what he's doing. And if he told you to do it, you better do it. So, all right, I done did another two hours. I done made must be about two hour video from each video. So, I'm going to end this. I think that's all I needed to read, right? Some people hate thine enemy. A footnote on Mark, Matthew 5 and 43. Some people in Jesus' day wrongly believed that it was permissible 
to hate one's enemy. However, the law of Moses never used the words hate thine enemy. Instead, it instead it called for kindness even towards an enemy's an animal. Wow. The law commended love not only for one's neighbor, but also for the stranger, enemy, a resistant alien. Alien. Hey, Levi. Leviticus 19, 18, 34. Let's see. Leviticus. That's up here. Leviticus what? Nineteen. Leviticus nineteen and the eighteen verse. Okay, here we eighteen. Leviticus nineteen. Eighteen verse said, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So I guess that's speaking about the, the animal. Alien. Re, enemy or resident alien. All right. So I guess that'll be it. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go get, heat up my breakfast. I'm trying to really see this shirt. Move my hair. Okay. And it's nice and warm because I'm burning up. I'm about to take it off because I'm in the house now. All right, so I'll talk to y'all later. Be blessed and make sure you get saved the way the Bible says. And live, live right. Get the Holy Ghost so it can help you live right, teach you to live right, and bring all those things to your remembrance that you need to remember. When you get down in old age, God bless you. Bye.